Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Minerals Live. How's it going? It's just Steve and I today. Just us two. Yep. Mm. Everybody else is out having a good time. Doing something. Yeah. Phil went to a wedding. Yeah, I think Phil went to a wedding. 61-year-old aunt was getting married. Yeah, and Mm. Graham's going down uh, south once again to uh, the Tucson area. Yeah. Some business going on down there, so... Mm -hmm. uh, He's headed down that way. Already preparing for 2021. Yep, yep. And uh, doing some mineral chasing down Mm -hmm. there. So uh, it could be some additional new things coming through the door. Mm -hmm. So uh, welcome, everybody. Yep. Minerals Live Mm -hmm. for uh, March 4th, 2020. Yes. It's no longer February. I really appreciated that Richard started the show by telling us that this weekend yes. was Don't forget time to set your clock. for <laughs> jumping ahead. Mm-hmm. and uh, Spring forward, as they say. Spring forward. I'm going to lose an hour of sleep. And we get more. We've decided that mm-hmm. we're going to get more light yes. at, in the afternoon so mm-hmm. we can get all our honeydews done when we get home. There you go. Yep. That's a good way to look at it. That's right. It's usually the season for Savannah and I to take evening walks now that oh, it's light out. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Try well, to get a little exercise to, yeah, you know, to keep from looking down like me. <laughs> well, wasn't going to go there, Steve. <laughs> oh, goodness. Anyway, no. Yeah, I'll be out there walking, too. Yes, jogging. Um, I'll be uh, walking down to the corner uh, <laughs> IHOP and the... <laughs> Having the endless pancakes. Yeah, endless pancakes. Uh, so just tell them to bring you out the can of whipped cream just put it on the table. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Strawberries and whipped cream. That's mm-hmm. the that's the topping of choice. Yep. I don't blame you. Yeah. So but. we're having some fun with minerals. We've got we lots are. of new things coming through the door. A mm-hmm. uh, bunch of things that, that were acquired slightly before and since the Tucson show. So mm-hmm. um, we're going to be hitting the road with some of those before very long. Uh, April, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Early April you head out, right? Yep. I'll be headed uh, down south and to the east coast, mm-hmm. and then back through the Midwest, um, and then uh, Phil will be going. F- uh, will be going to the mid upper Midwest: mm-hmm. Michigan, Wisconsin, Missouri, Ohio, parts of Ohio, and mm-hmm. and so uh, Phil will be out there uh, crushing it again on on his road trip, and then then uh, we're adding new minerals all during this time. They're mm-hmm. just hitting our our uh, lab, and right. so uh, each one of us will have a brand new batch, a new selection of things going mm-hmm. on the road. Richard will go out in June yep. with another new selection of minerals. Mm-hmm. So so uh, it's going to be quite an exciting time, and, and uh, look forward to seeing all of you on your ro- on our road trips. Uh, mm-hmm. So knowing that that all three of us are going, basically we've got the United States, other than Hawaii and Alaska, oh, yeah. covered. So <laughs> if you are anywhere in the continental United States and you would like one of us to stop by with a van load of really really pretty and affordable mineral specimens, we would be happy to uh, stop by your home and show you what we got. Absolutely, and we would offer enjoy the opportunity to look at your private collection and, mm-hmm. and uh, discuss where you're headed with your collection so it'd be a lot of fun to get together and uh, you can contact us at minerals at collectors edge.com the same place when you want one of the specimens on minerals live mm-hmm. just send us a note and tell us what you, we'd like f- uh, for you guys to uh, consider stopping by our mm-hmm. home or our office we do both yep yeah, we'll do anything. Yep. <laughs> we'll meet you. Well, yeah, in a parking lot. <laughs> this guy will meet you out in a field in the middle of nowhere. I have <laughs> literally set up folding tables in a vacant lot. Uh, people were doing metal detecting. A couple mm-hmm. of our customers were out doing metal detecting. And uh, they said, hey, we don't want to stop metal detecting, but if you want to come by and show us your minerals, uh, come mm-hmm. on by. So they directed me over the phone how to find the the vacant field that they were metal detecting in Mm -hmm. and uh i set up folding tables and we had a a couple hours looking at beautiful minerals from the back end of the truck so there you go so uh we'll do almost anything to uh Mm -hmm. have an opportunity to meet with you and show you fine minerals it's a lot of fun it is yeah every every trip is a new adventure you know (laughs) maybe the same territory but every trip seems to be just different enough yeah to keep it interesting yeah there's a new adventure last time richard went out the the uh, transmission (laughs) went out or the Oh, front, wheel, wheel bearings, front yeah. wheel bearings went out, and he had to limp the, the car 10 miles an hour uh, 
what about 40 miles, 40 miles. about 40 miles at 10 miles an hour to get to the repair shop and mm -hmm. that was i'm sure that was fun uh, it wasn't exactly the repair shop just getting to a hotel for the <laughs> night <laughs> then getting a u-haul in the morning so i could have the yeah. thing towed away yeah it was the middle of nowhere literally so uh that's mm -hmm. one of the you know everybody we talk to says man i would love to be a mineral dealer no you don't and <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty glamorous. Yeah, oh you yeah, can... we're living the dream here. <laughs> it's a lot of fun about half the time. Yep. And it's a lot of work the other half. When you get to play with rocks, it's a fun time. It is. Mm. And uh, some of the some of the other work is, is somewhat challenging. Yep, yep, yep. It's okay. Every job is that way. So. Yep, yep. For sure. It's okay. We're here for you. Don't let us think we're not enjoying it. We do. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be doing road trips, and yes. I think the, the next show that we will be doing, the official show, is the Denver Gym and Mineral it's, Show. It's looking that way. Both the uh, shows in uh, China have been uh, at least postponed. Yep. yep. So uh, the show in, uh, outside of Shanghai has been completely canceled, and Chenzhou has been hiatus delayed. And so the the, China, the country of China is suffering a great deal with mm -hmm. the coronavirus malady, and so um, they we pray for all of them. Absolutely. Honestly, that's it's not a good thing, and it's really mm -hmm. disrupted their their country in many ways. We have lots of uh, customer friends, mm -hmm. dealer friends over there, and and uh, it's it's a shame to see uh, what's been going, going on, on over there. Right. Uh, I think all of our employees uh, or co co-workers that, that work with fine. us, yeah. they're all fine and mm -hmm. back in China. Yes, at home in uh, a self-imposed quarantine. Mm -hmm. They asked them to go to their rooms for two weeks. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah, when okay. they came back into the country. Interesting. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. Well, that's, that's uh, you know, could come to a neighborhood near you. Yep. Well, so. but apparently they're slowly asking them all to go back to work. So. Yep. It's just a Wuhan area that they're still... Really keep them locked down. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll we'll keep you posted. Yeah, mm -hmm. but the shows over there are delayed. Yes. One of the one of the things we wanted to do on Minerals Live today is to is to give a update mm -hmm. on one of the shows that will happen in Tucson next year. Mm -hmm. There had been an announcement that oh, yeah. the El Conquistador mm -hmm. uh, location and new show that was going to be held in 2021 uh, in Tucson was not going to go on. And then shortly thereafter, like the, on, next day. the next day, <laughs> a letter came out and said, no, we are going to have a show. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that will be a beautiful new venue mm -hmm. uh, on the very north side of Tucson. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how that comes together because mm -hmm. uh, there was, you know, a, a stop and start once again. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know how many dealers uh, that Laura Delano has been able to sign up, but the property is absolutely beautiful. beautiful. Right. And I, I think it will be uh, eventually a very fine show. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a little bit further north on Oracle than is uh, uh, the westward look. So yep. apparently the uh, hotel shortened their contractual requirements for the dealers when they came in. They only have to stay for six days now okay. rather than 14, I think it was before. Uh, okay. So, and so, so that's what liberated the, right. uh, the contract and yes. they could, they could when, go next year. Yeah. When we were informed them that they were going to cancel, they said, hold on a minute. <laughs> what do we have to do to make this work? And right. that's what she told them. And apparently okay. it's going to work. Well, fantastic. Well, I'm very happy for her mm -hmm. and for all the dealers that would like to go up to uh, El Conquistador, a beautiful property. Mm -hmm. um, and once again, in Tucson of next year, there will be really fine minerals all over all town. All over town. You, you either have to be really good with Uber or get a rental car. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you're going to be traveling from one end to the other of Tucson. Yep. Mm -hmm. so, but that's okay. It's not yeah. a bad town. Yeah. And nice time of year. Mm -hmm. Temperature is usually pleasant. Yep. So... It's all good. Absolutely. But we wanted to make that little uh, update <laughs> since last week we, right, had, we, said, uh, yeah, no we had announced the, the demise of the show. And this year, this week, it's back on again. Back on. Yep. Let's hope, let's hope it stays on. There you go. Knock on wood. Yep. So anyway, Richard's mm -hmm. been working very hard yes. uh, pulling together some very nice mineral specimens mm -hmm. for us to talk about today. In fact, the first one is an absolute killer. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's really, really a beautiful example of the uh, classic green quartz that's mm -hmm. coming out of Wanggong, Inner Mongolia, yes. in China. You know, I say still coming out, although this batch 
came out what about two years ago now? Yes, that's uh, right. about two years ago now. Uh, with these uh, green quartz crystals that are extremely reminiscent of some of the ones that came out of Delnagorsk in Russia mm -hmm. some years back. Uh, but also the green quartz from Wongong and Inner Mongolia is often forming the matrix for these brand new pink fluorites mm -hmm. that, that have been coming out of the Wongong locality. So uh, these uh, there's quite a bit of this. Uh, I, uh, some people have said Hedenberg included quartz. I don't know mm -hmm. really what the inclusions are that are causing this this green color and these beautiful, well-formed bipyramidal quartz crystals. Mm -hmm. These are amazing things. And the luster is just glassy, glassy. They're extremely well-formed and kind of a stack of these bipyramidal Quartz crystals, really impressive crystallization, mm -hmm. a really attractive piece. And I'll tell you what, you're going to want to get to your computer and and uh, get on, uh, you know, a, an email gend up to right. minerals at collectorsedge.com because the price on this is extremely reasonable. It's you're going to want to, yeah, you're going to want to <laughs> order this one. It was the, one of the nicest ones. We bought a big batch of these mm -hmm. uh, when they came out a couple years ago from Wongong and. Uh, this is actually one of the nicest. Uh, it's it's a classic form. Some of them are are more typical uh, prismatic quartz with the normal rhombohedral termination, but these are these bipyramidal crystals, kind of stacked in chains, and they're highly lustrous, kind of a pleasing uh, a medium green color. Mm -hmm. uh, they're actually. The still photos that I'm looking at on the screen here are a little more gray green. Right. In person, they're actually a little brighter green, mm -hmm. uh, and so it's it, it's and it, the, even on the turntable, it doesn't quite convey quite right. the beauty of the the green on right. this. It really is pretty. What's the size of this piece, Rich? So it measures six point five by nine point seven by five point five centimeters. So it's it's nearly four inches in mm -hmm. in length from one end to the other, and great luster wonderful color and uh you know super uh, aesthetics on this piece and you're not going to believe how inexpensive this is the uh, biggest of the quartz uh i am assuming it's kind of the chain of crystals yes, is the seven one on the right there the, i see the kind of double yeah, terminated long, yeah double long thing on the right yeah and uh, that's seven centimeters in length, just to give you an idea. And the whole thing width-wise is 9.7 centimeters right. across. And this is a stupid cheap specimen. Just $975. Yep. I, I tell you, you want to get your email in as soon as possible to minerals at collectorsedge.com. Richard will uh, check the time of arrival on these things. Yep. If you've been looking at these... I, I, honestly, this is one of the prettiest of this style that we've had in the inventory, yep. and and I, I don't think you could replace this at no. that price. No. It's it's a super specimen. So yep. nine seventy five. Uh, send Richard an email and tell him you mm -hmm. you want him to send them out, and he packs those up and ships them to you at at no cost for right. the outbound mm -hmm. leg of the shipment. Uh, so what do you have to lose? You ought to get this one. You put this in your collection shelf. If you're a small cabinet size uh, collector, mm -hmm. you will you will want to keep this in a big way because yep. it's it's absolutely gorgeous. Keep it up against my in black fact, shirt. I'm 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 kind of I hadn't seen this one at shows in a while. I'm kind of mm -hmm. surprised that it still exists. Right. It's a it's a beautiful piece. It's a super little piece. Where'd you find this one? Well, it's a long story, I'll tell you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a killer. Right after we turn off the audio. And okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a killer. Anyway, yeah. opportunity for you. Yeah, beautiful. Yep. Taking us to specimen number dos. Let's do it. And this is really cool also. Mm -hmm. This is a, a quartz growing over calcite crystals from uh, Nashik mm -hmm. district in Maharashtra, India. And at times, these were called cricket bat mm -hmm. calcites right. uh, after one that Steve Smale had, a very similar shaped 
to these, mm -hmm. but I think his was somewhere yeah. on the order of 15, 16 inches in, <laughs> in, in size. Uh, but it was the same basic principle where it was these uh, kind of cricket back shaped uh, mm -hmm. um, calcites that are overgrown with uh, sparkly quartz crystals. Mm -hmm. And um, these are a great example of that, of that crystallization habit. And it looks like there's a little bit of uh, green that's mm -hmm. also been covered with the Druzy quartz. And I don't know what's up underneath it, whether it's whether it's some apophyllite or whether it's uh, some some chloride or something else that's underneath the uh, quartz. Mm -hmm. But it sure gives a nice color contrast right. here. Mm -hmm. Nice and With, sparkly. Yeah, sparkly, <laughs> nice little subtle color contrast. Mm -hmm. And uh, really very, very attractive specimen. And this is a good size piece, folks. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of times you, you would think uh, at the price we're going to offer this that you'd be getting a toenail or, a, or right. a small miniature or something like that. This is uh, m three inches across. Mm -hmm. What's the t actual size of this, Rich? Uh, it's seven by seven point seven by three point eight centimeters. Yeah, so seven point seven centimeters across, just a hair more than uh, three inches across. Mm -hmm. Very attractive piece. Uh, the longest of these uh, quartz overgrowths over the calcite is 3.4 centimeters mm -hmm. so tiny little cricket bats yep. and uh, just a really lovely attractive specimen if you're a collector of, of crystals from India and you want to add something a little different other than stillbite and apophyllite and eulandite this is uh, one that adds a little uh, contrast to your display and mm -hmm. it's quite pretty yep. so uh, really really nice specimen and Richard's offering this at a super price today just two hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, that's a great specimen. Yep. What a what a quartz combination! Number one and number two. Yeah. Oh, you know, hey. yeah. That's that's a great deal. Yep. Both of them are outstanding. Yep. So let's see here. Get us back. Mm. There we go. Yeah, there we are. Get back in the back in the habit of doing this. Yeah. You know, being away for a month, that uh, you kind of <laughs> lose lose the rhythm of the changing to cameras and. Picture shots. Now, and did everything. this come out of anybody's collection? That that uh, oh, cricket bat quart calcite over quartz with a, quartz overgrowth. Let's take a look here. We got, uh, I believe it was MZ. Yeah, probably was, was mm -hmm. but I, I since it doesn't specifically say it's yeah. it actually uh, could have come from that collection. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know if anyway, that was cryptic enough. People probably figured out what they're talking about. <laughs> a but, great uh, piece from India. Indeed, a really nice specimen for two hundred and fifty bucks. Get a hold of Richard at minerals at collectorsedge .com. Please do. And Thanks we're so staying with India. We are, at least for one more mineral. I love the color of cabin site. Yeah. It, it it's it's so unique in the mineral world. Is there anything else that has this this color i don't think so i don't think so either i mm -hmm. mean it's really distinctive mm -hmm. you see this color for a for you know half a block away and you're <laughs> gonna know hey there's a cabin site right yep and uh from the wagoli quarries maharashtra india mm -hmm. and this one's super well crystallized a very nice size piece and great crystallization in fact so many times with the with the cabin sites the um little clusters of crystals which are ball-like uh, sp nearly spherical they they don't really show the the um they're so com compact such compact uh perfectly shaped little balls that you can't see the beauty of the individual cabin site crystals but this specimen not only has that ball-like structure of the crystal cr clusters of cabin site, but it also has numerous sprays of well-formed individuals. It's it's somewhat unique. It doesn't happen uh, all that often where you get these this mm -hmm. a nice distinct formation.
combination of the of the cabin site crystals and it's really quite attractive the color is top notch mm -hmm. the luster is really good on this cluster and it has a super color contrast with the uh, probably still bite forming the uh, whitish background right. for this beautiful uh, light blue uh, uh, mineral it's got, it's got such a unique color it's very intense almost a neon blue color mm -hmm. you know it's it's one of those things that you absolutely need in your mineral collection because it's such a vibrant color and uh, this one's a very well crystallized example yeah i agree so pretty hmm. size of this one uh this one is 4.5 by 6.2 by 4.5 centimeters okay and the the largest grouping of the cabin sites there on the matrix the cluster of crystals is mm -hmm. uh 2.5 centimeters across right so uh, that's about, about an, an inch. inch across yep yep so that's that's really a lovely specimen super little piece yep and the price today is extremely good on this as well to get one with this kind of color and color contrast between mm -hmm. the matrix uh, mineral mineralization as well as the cabin site uh, for only nine hundred dollars, this is a great thing. Yep, great deal. Yeah, really, really pretty. Do we know where this one came from? Did we have anything at all on? Uh, on this? Oh, gee, yeah, that one's. Oh, this one's really early collection. I'm huh. not sure where that one where came, that from. came from. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. And, and it's it's a great piece. Yep. Yeah. Almost, super. Almost wonder if that was as a misentry. Yeah, might might be. Yeah. Although it was entered fairly early in the in the process. Yeah. Process, yeah. 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 That's a great piece. Yep. It's one of those that you'll definitely want to get a hold of Richard and get that sent to you. In fact, the, the top, the first three specimens on this show, I didn't preview them at all, and I'm like, wow, these are great things. Yep. If you let Richard pick minerals for you, he's going to get some great things. He's got just, great taste. Just, so. just send me your budget. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll, I'll drive up to your door, set them up for you in the yep. case, yep. and you're good to go. You're going to be happy. Yep. Yeah, because these are three fine specimens. Yep. 900 bucks on that cabin site. There you get, go. A, get a hold of Richard at minerals at collectorsedge.com. Yep. Mm -hmm. Moving on. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is a wolfenite mm -hmm. from the Cockaveld Plateau in Namibia. And the Collector's Edge has teamed with uh, local miners in a number of areas in the Cockaveld Plateau. Uh, we've had several different uh, digging projects. And basically what we're going in for is looking for great dioptes and malachite specimens on very near surface copper deposits in the in the Cockaveld Plateau. Mm -hmm. And occasionally in these copper deposits there will be some wonderful crystals of wolfenite that have also formed in and in along with the um, copper mineralization in these deposits and this was a specimen that came in uh, maybe a year and a half two years ago and it's it was one of, in my taste it's one of the nicest um, small cabinet size wolfenites that we've gotten out of the Cockaveld Plateau. The crystals are very well formed. Uh, they're almost always a little bit solution etched and as somebody who knows uh, uh, crystal, uh, crystallography and mineralogy a little better than I would be able to uh, tell you why in, the, in this deposit these tend to be not so uh, mere luster. Mm -hmm. They tend to be a little bit more solution etched. But in any case, it's fairly common in the Cockaveld. In fact, I don't know that I've ever seen a highly lusterous, no. uh, luster, well, yeah. mere luster, well formed uh, mm -hmm. wolfenite from there. This is very, very good for this area. Yep. So if you're a lover of wolfenite and haven't added a really nice wolfenite, these are the cool thing about this is this is 1.8 centimeters uh, on each crystal there, mm -hmm. or the largest the of largest, those crystals. Right. And so that's that's a good size uh, crystal. And uh, what's the overall size of this? Overall dimensions are 7.4 by 5.3 by 2.7 centimeters. And, and I like this uh, specimen, this particular uh, photo kind of shows it laying down with the quartz shard mm -hmm. uh, coming off to the, to the right as I'm looking at it. But 
But uh, one of the things, like Richard has mounted it on the turntable, he's actually mounted the cluster of these wolfenites mm -hmm. up on a little stand, and it really can be displayed very nicely that mm -hmm. way. Right. If you had a custom base from somebody like Sonny Wood uh, uh, out of, in Aurora, Colorado, mm -hmm. you could really perch this up in a way that was very attractive. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, if you're a wolf and I collector, I imagine you don't have one of these from the Cockavell Plateau because mm -hmm. they're especially a good one because they're not all that common. Right. So uh, I would strongly suggest you can, if you're building a S South African mineral collection, uh, as many people are building so suites of minerals from Namibia, uh, whether it's Arango or Sumed b back in the day or, or uh, the Cockavell Plateau. Brandberg, if you're building a Southern Africa uh, mineral collection, this would be a great addition to yep. that collection. It's one of the nicer ones we've gotten in from the Cockavell. Yep. $875 today. Yep. What a deal. Yeah. It's a beautiful piece. Yep. Try to try to bring you nothing but the best on Minerals Live. Yeah. Make it worth your while. Thank you for uh, tuning in. Give you some good deals. Yeah. Well, you do a good job with the selection of these and the photographic documentation of them. People can really enjoy uh, how beautiful these pieces are when they when they see them on Minerals Live, both the turntable view mm -hmm. and your still photos that right. you've taken. Hopefully, uh, in the next month or so, we get a new camera for the turntable. I, you know, it's still a little, a little blurry or mm. you know, not the best. I mm -hmm. just thought it was my eyes. No, no uh, sorry, getting it's, older it's by the, the day. <laughs> So we're working on it. Every you know, just baby steps here. You know, you life. Don't want to rush into quality or anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to move on to specimen number five. Yes. Uh oh. So oh no. There we go. More temptation. <laughs> oh, Girl Scout cookies yeah, have right. arrived. Yes. Uh, it's time to wrap up Minerals Live. <laughs> we had two more two more specimens to go, but yeah, yeah, there's a new delivery it. of Girl Scout Gotta cookies. Go. <laughs> Samoas are out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So next we're going on to a mimetite yes. from San Pedro Coralitas in uh, Chihuahua, Mexico. Yes. And uh, a lovely specimen it is. Indeed. And I think this did come out of somebody's collection. This one is a Gerhard Wagner piece. I thought yes. maybe it was. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful specimen. Yep. One of the things I like about this, so many times the mimetites from the San Pedro Coralitos deposit in Chihuahua, Mexico, are, are like all to the edge with a, a continuous carpet of these botryoids of the mimetite. And this particular piece, there's actually a little bit of more lightly colored botryoids and some matrix showing. So you get the color contrast between the incredible uh, butterscotch yellow mm -hmm. uh, of the mimetite and then a little lighter uh, whitish uh, to, to off uh, light yellow balls uh, as well as some of the matrix showing through the reddish matrix. And you really can see how lively and bright the color is mm -hmm. on this uh, beautiful mimetite specimen. How big is this one, Rich? This one measures 3.5 by 5.2 by 3.8 centimeters. It's a full-size miniature. Yep. And, um, you know, back in the day when these were first coming out, they were produced in, in quite a bit of quantity. And the last decade or so, these have become highly prized by, by mm -hmm. serious collectors. Yep. And, and like I say, this one has something that most of them don't have, and that's a nice color contrast in the matrix mm -hmm. surrounding the mimetite botryoids. Uh, and it really sets that off. So many times they're just a cluster of, or a carpet of nothing but the, the yellow balls mm -hmm. of the mimetite, and it just really doesn't get the pop that, that this specimen does. Right. So I, I think you'll really want to see this particular piece in person. Uh, you can get a hold of Richard at minerals at collectors edge.com and ask him to send you this one on approval mm -hmm. and uh, the largest of the mimetite balls in fact these are quite large often they're much smaller than this the largest is 1.4 centimeters across so that's a that's a big botryoid mm -hmm. and uh, just quite lovely and very affordably priced yep just two thousand dollars today yep 
most of the time I'm seeing miniatures out that they're in the market where they're thirty five hundred, four thousand, five thousand dollars. This is two thousand dollars and a lovely specimen. Yep. All yeah, right. strongly Ooh. encourage you to get a hold of Richard on this one. For sure. Yep. And it looks like from the little preview listing that I've got that yes. we may end on a uh, cherry red note. I, I was able to dig one out. Good, good, and, good. And um, here you go. Another nice. Sweet Home Roto in position number six. There yeah. you go. It's it's one of our uh, very common occurrences on Minerals yes. Live <laughs> that you will see a Sweet Home Mine Rotocrosite. They're, they're in such great demand all over the world. In fact, I just had a wonderful... Uh, email from a collector in France who wants to add one to their collection and mm -hmm. so so uh, you know the people all over the world are are still very passionate about the beauty of these cherry red yep. rhodochrosites from the Sweet Home Mine in Park County Colorado mm -hmm. and this is out of a classic pocket this was from the Millennium Pocket was found just a day or two after um, the first uh, in the year 2000, mm -hmm. and uh, it was found in the fluorite rays, where some of the very finest rhodochrosite that that mining area called the fluorite rays mm -hmm. produced some of the best cherry red color, some of the best luster you can see as it goes around on the turntable, the great luster, mm -hmm. and many of the pockets had these really well formed. Uh, black lustrous tetrahedrite crystals and they make such a nice contrast between the the absolute black tetrahedrite with with lustrous well-formed crystals and then the cherry red rhombohedral crystals of the rhodochrosite mm -hmm. so just a a really super little piece uh, and the, and I say little but uh, from a size perspective this is anything but little mm -hmm. uh, what's the size of this one rich uh, this one is five by nine point six by three centimeters and it's, it's so it's a very elongate piece mm -hmm. and it's nearly just a little bit short of four inches across right so when you think about rhodochrosite specimens and you get anything that's in the small cabinet size range you expect them to be multiple thousands of dollars and this particular piece is under that uh, four digit uh, number indeed indeed let people look at it one more time on the yeah, turntable please. before we get to the yeah and that's something yeah, pretty piece yeah it really is and it, it's uh the tetrahedrite on this is really extremely sharp. well formed mm -hmm. and big crystals uh the the largest of the roto roms is 1.1 centimeters on edge yep. and i i would think that you're probably somewhere about the same size on the tetrahedrites mm -hmm. you I know didn't measure them that's unlikely yeah. but maybe it's, a little smaller maybe a little smaller Mm -hmm. but, uh, but they're good. Maybe, maybe seven millimeters, something mm -hmm. like that. Really well formed, very lustrous, nice black color contrast to the cherry red of the rhodochrosite. And what's this one selling for, Rich? Just $750. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yep. A very, very pretty piece. Mm -hmm. And for that price, it's a really good deal. I think mm -hmm. I think if you haven't, uh, you know, been able to afford to add one of the Sweet Home Mine Rotochrosites to your collection, this is one you might want to consider very strongly because mm -hmm. it's, it's in the three-digit numbers rather than four or five or six or right. even seven. <laughs> and uh, They happen, folks. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of fun to see a, a nice, attractive uh, specimen of Sweet Home Mine Rotochrosite that right. nearly everyone can afford. There you go. That's the whole idea. Yep. Mm -hmm. Lovely piece. Yep. Well, any other thoughts today, Richard? Um, did get a little bit of feedback at the show. Um, Phil's fun facts did kind of fade away for a couple months towards mm -hmm. the end of last year. We got busy and talking about Tucson and everything. We're definitely going to get back to that. We got a lot of requests to get that back Wonderful. on that segment back on the show. Yep. So, uh, and uh, if any other suggestions, please don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Yeah. Send us a note. Minerals yeah. at Collector's Edge or Richard at Collector's Edge. If you like Steve, Steve at Collector's Edge. Sure. You can send me something. I'll forward it on to Richard. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> or Phil at Collector's Edge. Or Phil. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're very creative with our emails here. Yeah, that's so. right. 
And, Pretty easy to figure out how to get a hold of whoever you want. And Phil does some great presentations on mm. Minerals Live, so mm. we would love to have you. If you're interested in anything about Colorado minerals or mineral localities on a worldwide basis, mm -hmm. he loves to research and, and uh, bring you some great little tidbits yep. about uh, mm -hmm. important mining localities around the world. Right. So uh, yep. don't, don't hesitate to ask Phil to put yep. something for you on air there you go and he should be back next week yeah should be back tomorrow but we didn't want to hold off the show all the way until thursday sure. so anyway well we appreciate you stopping in and mm -hmm. watching minerals live yep. and uh don't forget to check out our new websites mm -hmm. we have two of them yep we have reserve.collectorsedge.com mm -hmm. and our standard mm -hmm. www.collectorsedge.com mm -hmm. And uh, both of those websites have been completely revamped right. mm -hmm. and uh, are showing some beautiful mineral specimens that I know you will enjoy going out and, and seeing, right. as well as lots of information about the Collector's Edge as a company and mm -hmm. some of our mining projects. So if you haven't visited those sites, please do. I know you'll enjoy the experience and, and uh, may just find a few more things you'd like to add to your collection. It could happen. Be careful. <laughs> Well, thanks for visiting thanks folks. everybody and don't forget this weekend fall back or no spring jump forward, forward spring forward spring forward i prefer falling back yeah, me too me <laughs> but too. Well, anyway. we're springing forward yep <laughs> all right well thanks again everybody and take care we'll catch you again next week on another edition of minerals live